Hello, so today I'm going to be showing you a video on how to record daily retail sales uh, in QuickBooks Online. Now I have this set up for a test company uh, for QuickBooks Online Essentials, but this could actually be done even with the lowest end version of the program, which would be QuickBooks Online Simple Start. So if you have the type of business where it's like a retail store where all your you know, individual transactions are being recorded, uh, say in the register, and you want to Z-tape at the end of the night, you want to enter those totals into QuickBooks Online, and you're not using QuickBooks Online for the individual sales. So the way you would do that is first, you would actually want to set up um, a specific set of accounts, as well as some items. So right here, if you look, this is the accounts you would want to make sure you have set up in your chart of accounts. You would need cash on hand, checking, and daily sales, which are all bank accounts, and undeposited funds, as well as, if you track sales tax, a sales tax liability account. As far as the items you would want to set up for recording the daily sales, you want an item for cash uh, payments, for checks, for any checks that you bring in, um, for the sales that you're going to record, the actual sales tax you're recording that you're collecting, as well as any credit card payments. So, oh, come over here. Okay, no, it's not a big deal. No, that actually is. Okay, there we go. So, what we'll do is if we actually go into QuickBooks Online, so I have already set up, if we actually go to our chart of accounts, you can see I've already set up the different types of accounts that we need. And if we go into the item list, you can actually see I've set up the individual items. Now, there are other videos out there that show you how to you know, record the daily sales, but what I'm going to do is take you through the entire process uh, as far as recording, this, recording the sales, doing the deposit, and then even when it comes time to make the sales tax payment. So what you would do is let's say you have the end of the night, you run your tape off of your register, it's time to enter a total. So what you'll do is go to the plus sign and you'll click on sales receipt. For the customer, this can be listed as whatever you want. I just listed a customer called Daily Sales. Let's say the receipt date is the first of the month. Payment method, just mark this as Daily Sales. And for the deposit too, we select the Daily Sales um, account, bank account that we have created. So the first thing you're gonna do is enter in whatever the gross income was. So that would be the sales item, the sales income. And let's say we brought in $1,000 of sales that day. Now let's say we also uh, brought in the sales tax off that thousand dollars. Obviously this is not the proper calculation, but let's say that of that, say $200 was sales tax that we collected. So right now we actually have it as 1200 total. So now what we want to do is we actually want to break down the methods of payment we actually collected. So let's say for cash, there we go. Cash, this is cash we actually collected. You want to enter this as a negative amount because the way this works is you want the total of the daily sales receipt to equal zero at the end. So let's say for cash we had negative $600. 
Okay, so now that leaves $600 left. Let's say we had two checks. So let's say this was check number 2020, and it was from Bob Smith. And let's say Bob's payment was 150. And let's say we had another check. And let's say this was check number 3450. And that was from Jim. Johnson. And let's say his check was 200. So now you can see, so far we still have 250. So now let's say that we had some credit cards. Let's say if you're processing credit cards at your, um, at your location, let's say you have Let's say the rest of this was all done with credit cards. So we do negative 250. Okay, so there we go. So now you can see we have the income, sales tax we collected, the total of the cash payments, the total of the checks, and the total of the credit cards. So this all comes out to zero. So we'll go ahead and save and close that. Now you'll notice that we just did a daily sales total. So now if we go to run a report, this is only this is the only transaction that's in here right now. But for example, if we go to a profit and loss, it shows a sales income is the gross amount of the sales that we entered, the $1,000. And if we actually look at the balance sheet, we can see that the cash on hand is 600. The undeposited funds is 600. Okay. And if we actually look at the liability, we can actually see the sales tax because we collected the $200 in sales tax. So that's sitting in our sales tax liability account. So now let's say it's time to, at the end of the night, we went to this total, we need to go deposit it to the bank. So here's what you would do. So if we go back here, it was, if we go to our bank deposit, you can see that we have the, uh, the individual checks listed here. So we're gonna go ahead and mark those. The Visa, and MasterCard and Amexes, those are probably gonna take a few days to post. So we're not gonna mark those just yet. You actually wanna wait until those get cleared by your bank to actually mark it as deposited. But the other thing we are going to do is we are actually going to do the cash that we deposited. So right now, the cash on hand is the cash that we took in on that daily sale. So altogether, it was, um, actually, let me go back here. Save, go back and look at sales receipt, just to make sure. Okay, so the cash was 600. So what we'll do, back, do the bank deposit, and here's the other thing, for the account, this is where we'll actually put it into our actual checking account that we're using. So let's say we're still going to mark it on the first, so we enter that check, that check, and then also we're going to use the cash on hand because this way it'll take it out of the cash on hand account. Okay, 
20 plus cash and it was 600. Okay. So now if we look, we've got a total of 950. Okay. So we'll go ahead and click on save and close. And now you can see, if we look back at the balance sheet, our cash on hand is now zero. The checking account has the 950, which is all made up of those two checks and the cash. Okay, so now let's say it's a couple of days later. Um, the transactions for the Visa and MasterCard and all the other credit cards have come through. So we'll go ahead and do another bank deposit. And let's say this came in you know, Tuesday of the following week. So we'll go ahead and mark this. And chances are that the company is going to take out a fee. So altogether, you process $250 in credit cards, but let's say that they took out $50 in fees. So if we have an actual expense account here for, yep, bank charges and fees, we'll go ahead and use that. So then let's say minus $50 in fees. So that's going to bring the total of the deposit down to only 200 So we'll save and close that. So now we have processed the daily sales, deposited the money into the bank account. And now if we actually look at our report, we can see, okay, we had $1,000 of income, but then also for the bank charges and fees, we had to shell out $50 in expenses for that. So our net income just off that one day is 950. Now, chances are you're keeping track of your sales tax in whatever register system, but let's say it comes time, you know, monthly, quarterly, whenever you have to do your sales tax payments, it comes time to actually pay the sales tax. So right now you can see, if we look at our balance sheet, that remember that sales tax we collected is $200. So that's money that we don't own. That has to go to your local tax agency. So when it comes time to pay that, all you do is let's say you log on to whatever your state's website is, that's how you normally pay it. The way you'll do it is you'll record it as an expense. And let's say State Department of Taxation, that's the sample one I selected. The payment account is going to be the checking account because that's where you put the money. And let's say the payment date is the 15th. Payment method, we'll go ahead and just add a new payment method called EFT for electronic funds transfer. Now for the category, this will be that sales tax liability account. And we'll go ahead and say monthly sales tax payment. And we're paying the 200 that's sitting in the liability account. So you'll go ahead and record that payment in QuickBooks. Save and close it. And now you can see that liability is now back down to zero. And now what you'll have to remember to do is, even though you paid it actually in QuickBooks, you didn't really pay it. You just recorded it in QuickBooks. You still have a responsibility to either mail them a check. Um, if you do it that way, you record it as a check in QuickBooks instead of an expense. Or if you do it on your um, tax department's website, just log on to their website, record it, um, and make the payment uh, to them directly through their own website. So that's basically how you record the daily sales uh, in QuickBooks Online. It's actually very, very simple, uh, just a matter of setting up the right um, 
items as well as the accounts. And remember, here's the listing of the accounts you want to set up. And I'm sorry, these are the items. And then here are the actual accounts and the chart of accounts that you would want to set up. All right. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much.